Good evening and welcome to the December 11th, 2019 Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. If you could first all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We do roll call, please. Karen Chu? Here. James Hebert? Here. Melinda Torrance? Here. David Bork? Here. Chip Howe? Here. Jennifer Waters? Here. Good evening and welcome. Uh, this is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into an executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are being presented tonight. Please notify the chairperson, which is me, if you are unable to hear or to see the proceedings. The board will work from a prepared agenda We'll take up tonight's items in the following order. We're going to be approving minutes and decisions, and then we have an appeal for 4 Ocean Ave for a limited reduction of yard size, and then an appeal for a special exception home occupation for 2 Moxie Way, and then the third appeal is a limited reduction of yard size for 8 Robinson Road. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chair will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criteria of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet the criteria. It is important to note that in, if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or the application. In many cases, the applicant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the request for the variance. Please understand that this is not legally relevant to the appeal, no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the applicant's situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criteria, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on that motion. A general vote will then be taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. If the majority of the voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as of the date the vote was taken, regardless of the approval on the final written decision that you would receive. Generally speaking, appeals from the adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court within 45 days of the board's decision. And again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding, so you have the right to be heard and see what is happening tonight. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation, and all board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair. So first, we are going to vote and approve the minutes from the November 13th, 2019 meeting. Did the board get a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Any questions or concerns or changes? No. Nope. Move to approve the minutes as presented. And seconded. All in favor? We have the written decision for 34 Powderhorn Drive, which was a special exception home occupation. Did anyone get a chance to review that? No. Yes. Does anyone have any concerns or additions, changes? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve to, uh, Appeal 2672 decision as written. Second. All in favor? And then we have the written decision for Appeal Number 2674, which is a variance appeal for 287 Gorm Road. Questions, concerns, comments, and motion? Motion to approve uh, appeal number 2674 as written. Second. All in favor? Great. Thank you. Okay, so the first appeal that we have tonight is appeal number 2675, which is a limited reduction of yard size. For Ocean Ave. First, I'll ask Mr. Longstaff from the town to give us a little background. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, appellant owns a single-family dwelling. Uh, the dwelling was built in 19, uh, 1922, and that's why it is eligible for a limited reduction of yard size as one of the, the criteria. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The structure includes a small single-story rear addition uh, that the uh, appellant wishes to add a second story to in order to have a master bathroom added to their bedroom. They only have one be uh, bathroom on the second floor that serves four bedrooms. So this is just going to uh, be a, a small, modest addition. Um, it has been reviewed by staff through the administrative review process for Higgins Beach character code standards, uh, and it has uh, met those standards. And so now, unfortunately, because the existing structure was built <laughs> in 1922, too close to the property line by today's standards, the only way that uh, that can be expanded or vertically or, or in any fashion is through the uh, through a variance. And, and this uh, limited reduction of yard size variance, as you remember, does allow for up to a five foot reduction on the side and rear yard setbacks and a 10 foot reduction on the front yard setbacks. The appellant's here tonight to ask for a, a side setback reduction. Great. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are That's you? That's good. I think Brian did a pretty good job of summarizing this uh, to add a second floor bathroom above the existing rear addition. Uh, the property has an eight foot setback requirement and we are asking for a two foot six inch setback on the right hand side to allow us to put that expansion over the second floor. The expansion on the second floor does not extend all the way over to the side of the building. Um, I held it in like three foot ten inches, I believe it is, from the first floor wall. And to do that, it was to maintain the uh, existing roof line on the house on that side without interrupting the roof line. So the addition doesn't look like it's uh, an extension of the main building itself. Um, other than that, I'm ready to answer the questions. Okay, let's go through the criteria. <clears throat> Number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size res residential is required was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Yeah, the assessor's office indicates it was built in 1922. Mr. Longstaff just shared that. Uh, number two, the required reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yeah, as Brian stated, the second floor contains four bedrooms and it's got one hallway bathroom, which is not very large. And the owner wants to add an additional bathroom for the master bedroom. Many of the properties in the zoning districts have bathrooms attached to a master bedroom and the requested yard reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner to use and enjoy the property in the same manner. Three, due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. The existing building and rear addition are approximately two feet from the right property line and were constructed prior to the zoning setbacks uh, that were enacted with the zoning uh, uh, district. It is also not possible to construct a proposed second floor bathroom above the existing one-story rear addition in conformance with the applicable yard size requirements. And I would further state that one of the main reasons we're going over that existing uh, uh, rear addition is that we can't add any more foundation to the property, but we can go vertically above an existing structure. Why can't you add foundation? I'm sorry? Why can't you add foundation? Uh, Is block it? coverage and uh, DEP requirements okay. for uh, compliance with their rules. Okay. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. 
As Brian said, also, the proposed second floor extension has received administrative approval from the Planning and Code Enforcement Office uh, for being in compliance with the character based zoning of Higgins Beach. And the impacts and effects of this approval, proposal will not be such substantially different from or greater than the building which conforms to the requirements. Five, the applicant has not commenced construction on the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is required so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. No work is started at all. Correct. All right. Board have any questions? Can you describe the homes on either side of the property? Are they in a similar situation where they're sort of bounded by their lot um, and uh, partially first story, partially second story buildings? On, on, on the adjacent properties you're yeah. talking about? Yes. Uh, the one to the inland side is a one and a half story cottage type building. Um, the one on the ocean side is kind of an extended one and a half story building. Uh, it's not a full two story, but and it covers quite a large property square footage on that lot as well. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions before I open it up to the public? No. Open it up to the public. I don't know if there's anyone here that would like to speak or has anything. Did we receive any letters or emails or phone calls, Brian? No. I think we got one letter. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I think we got a letter. Is this from an abutter? It must be. <coughs> so this is from Rodney Loughton, who is the owner of the Breakers Inn, who is an abutter. So he said, I am writing in regards to the zoning appeals of my neighbor, Susan Petrick, Petrolick, for Ocean Ave. I understand her application will be heard by the zoning board at their meeting December 11th. My property directly abuts her property. I fully support her appeal to expand her home vertically on the southwest side. So that's a good letter. Mm -hmm. If that was it, I will close the public hearing. And now the board will do the finding of facts and conclusions of law. I'm going to go down through the criteria now. Um, number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is required was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Ms. Torrance. We're going to go this way tonight. Ah, Wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this one's a slam dunk in that, uh, the, you know, Brian Lonsaf has com confirmed that it was built prior to 91, actually in 1990, uh, 1922. So I think we're Good to go on that mount that one. Ms. Waters? Nothing to add. Um, as stated by the applicant, uh, the year built 1922, as well as confirmed by the town. Agreed. Great. Yep, pretty straightforward criteria. All in favor of number one being met? Number two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, so the four bedroom home in, in this particular area, I, I think you've got a situation of functional, functional obsolescence to actually only have one bathroom. So I think it's really, it makes sense to have a second bathroom and I don't see where there's any issue um, with it not meeting the same, meeting the standard. Agreed. Um, could I ask a question at this point? I know I missed it, but is it all right? I mean, is there a bathroom on the first floor? Any kind of bathroom? Half bathroom. A half bathroom, so just a, just a toilet. Okay. Um, and I would say if there was a full bathroom on the first floor, I would view this as sort of reasonably desired rather than reasonably necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is a functioning bathroom in a four bedroom home that's sized that way that they can handle that amount. However, um, granted, if this is, if it's true, it's just one singular bathroom where folks can shower and bath and um, I don't see it, 
I don't think it's unreasonable to request this. No, I certainly agree. I think uh, having four bedrooms is uh, quite reasonable and usual uh, in this particular neighborhood, or really anywhere, uh, to have two full baths. Two full baths make a lot of sense. Right, and it's not uncommon for people to have a master bath, and so um, you know many homes are being remodeled with a master bath in addition to having the guest bathroom as well. So all in favor of two being met. Number three, due to the physical features of the lot and or location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. So again, um, you know, the, the fact that the existing structure was built when it was and before the zoning setbacks were enacted, and um, it's within a shoreland zone, so it's, there's no way to go out uh, in a different pattern and, and expand the footprint. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this is the only way to do it. Agreed. Um, as stated, it was built in 1922, so it was before any sort of zoning ordinance were put in place. Um, they're really restricted by the physical features of their lot. They're two feet from their property line. Um, so there really isn't any uh, there isn't a, any practical way to construct an additional bathroom otherwise without sacrificing something indoors if they were to demo one bedroom or something like that but then they'd be removing a bedroom from the home uh, uh, I completely agree I think uh, as Mr. Wilson pointed out uh, you have a situation where uh, lot coverage uh, would, would be exceeded any other way <clears throat> and uh, really this is the only practical way of doing it Right. It, there is no way for them to add a second floor addition over the existing one-story rear addition without being with, in being in conformance. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so all in favor of three being met. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. I appreciate the fact that this has already received approval of the Planning and Code, code Enforcement Department so uh, and being in character with the zoning requirements of this district. So um, I think that that says enough for me right there. Agreed. There was a letter from the butter too that gave a thumbs up. So yeah, as Ms. Waters stated, um, there was a letter from the abutters stating they didn't have any objection to the expansion, the vertical expansion of this building, and it seems to be uh, in line with other homes in the area that are one and a half and two stories. Uh, I'll further add that I think that um, this whole uh, it's an attractive way of, of, of doing the addition uh, is going to fit right uh, into the neighborhood nicely. I think it's, it'll actually uh, enhance the uh, appearance of this building and the neighborhood. Seems like a practical approach. Right. The proposed vertical addition is actually farther from the property line than the existing two-story dwelling and should have no greater impact on the neighborhood than if someone was doing a conforming addition. So all in favor of four being met. Five, the applicant has not commenced construction on the enlargement expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is required so the the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the effect application. Well, the applicant has stated, uh, or Mr. Wilson has stated, that no work has started. Um, I'm assuming that that's been verified probably at some point, but I, he's been before us before and I trust his, his statement there. Agreed. Right. The plan has been reviewed by planning and zoning, but no construction has started. So all in favor of five being met. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve appeal 2675 as written or as, as, uh, <laughs> as presented. And seconded. All in favor? Thank you.
I'm ready. Okay. Next we have an appeal for two Moxie Way, which is a special exception home occupation application. And I'll ask Mr. Longstaff again from the town to give us a little background first. Okay, this is a pretty straightforward uh, special exception home occupation um, permit approval request. Home occupations, as we all know, I think by now, home occupations are a special exception use in most of the residential districts, meaning that uh, would not normally be permitted unless they meet the standards for special exception, which you're going to go through today with the, with the appellant. Um, the parcel is an approved lot in the Bonnie Grove subdivision. Um, and uh, the appellant has put together, I think, a, a very complete application and addressed the uh, home occupation standards as well as the special exception yep. standards. Okay. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Um, I don't know if you want to give us a little more information about what you're doing specifically. Or we can uh, that's that's a million dollar question, right? <laughs> 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 Honestly, uh, uh, this. Uh, what we are doing is, it's, uh, my wife and I, uh, we've over the months dis discussed like we have a son who's four and a half years old, who's pretty independent now. Daughter's about seven months old, and I think we are very well settled in our jobs. Uh, I'm a clinical faculty member at the College of Pharmacy at UNE. Mm -hmm. My wife's a data analyst with TD Bank. So uh, I guess we've reached that point in life where jobs are monotonous. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> and adventure is always interesting, yeah. right? So uh, uh, she's good at what she does. Uh, she's she's a great cook. Uh, she does beautiful knittings and everything. And I've I've realized I enjoy doing things like uh, making things. Uh, so for example, I guess I've, we put in a few things there. Uh, there's a big wall clock uh, that we made last Christmas, mm -hmm. and uh, this is so it turned out much better than we had imagined it to be. And uh, honestly, we've got a lot of compliments. And in fact, uh, two offers. Uh, for it to be taken away from us. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and uh, then those, those are small trivial things. So we, we, uh, we're actually exploring uh, opportunities to do something that, you know, it's more of a hobby. Yeah. Uh, basically simple tools, make simple things, mm -hmm. try it out, you know. Yeah. If it works, great. If it doesn't, well, it looks really good around the house. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So uh, other than that, what What's the downstream goal? I don't think we are going to turn it into an overnight business. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as we would want to, we are really, really successful in what we are doing so far. We're going to keep it that way. We like the style that we have. Yeah, great. So, open Thank to you. questions. Um, so wh what we'll do is I'll read the questions if you just want to read the sure. answers and then elaborate as you wish. So the standards for a special exception. A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reasons of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. So uh, these projects are part-time. Uh, I think what the tools that we've involved are like uh, our basic drill machine, right, screwdriver, that are neither noisy nor none of our end products create dust, any sedimentation, any oil deposits. Right. So none of them are going to be a hazard to other, uh, you know, the environment, the neighborhood, anything. So I, I work in a college of pharmacy and I work with hazardous materials. So pretty much I can tell you what's going to be right. detrimental. Uh, B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Uh, one, uh, what we plan to do is put our material on Etsy. Uh, two, starting material is available at other homes, a Home Depot or Lowe's, so we don't expect we're going to have such a big turnover that you know, we have Amazon trucks driving up and down. <laughs> and three, we are not having a, res, uh, a commercial counter, so we don't expect people coming in and saying, hey, you know what, can I take a look at something? Right. What we have is what, what you see, is, and so no excess traffic is expected. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than the existing uses in the neighborhood. Again, uh, tools are, none of the tools are a fire hazard or consume commercial grade electricity. Uh, they're going to be used in an accommodated space. That's an extra bedroom that we have. Uh, I guess everything is within the city permit, so it should be okay. 
50, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. All the work is going to be done in our house. There is no plan to add on anything, another room to house plan, no construction required, so no sedimentation expected. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. So I was informed that it has to be actually less than 400 square feet for the residential part. We measured it. Uh, we, I gave in a map of the house, the plans. Uh, by our measurement, it's about 160 square feet, which is much less than the 20% square footage of our house. So I guess uh, it pretty much complies with all those that were advertised very nicely by Dr. Um, by Mr. Longstaff. F, if located in the shoreland zone, are you in the shoreland zone? No. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, we, my wife and I, we are both owners of the property. Uh, she would love to be here, but we have a baby who wants to sleep at seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hard to come. Yep, thank you. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. I don't know if there's a financial document requirement, but I'm more than happy to share it in a private communication. Well, no, and I mean, you told us that you and your wife have full-time jobs, which appear to be pretty good jobs, so, I mean, you know, you've testified to that. Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. So, uh, again, in the neighborhood, we don't plan to advertise, so there's no, there are not going to be any yard signs or any glow signs, something that bother our immediate neighbor. There's only one house opposite us. It's, it's a cul-de-sac. Yep. So even then, uh, we're not putting anything that would light up the house like a Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, so that should be okay. And you have a baby, so you probably won't be making noise. <laughs> All lights go out by second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be parking my car outside the house tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the town has separate performance standards for home occupation, which you so thoroughly included, which is awesome. I appreciate that. So we'll go through those as well. I don't know if the board had any questions on the performance standards before we are on the I was special. hoping for a few orders from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we can be meaner. <laughs> um, all right, so if there's no questions from the board, we'll jump into the performance standards for home occupation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one. The occupational profession shall be carried out on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Yes, as mentioned before, the project project would be carried on in a spare bedroom. Uh, I guess if there's a big one that storage, we might go to the basement. Other than that, we have enough space. Mm -hmm. Number two, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Mm, this is the house of two kids. Uh, undoubtedly, it's going to be residential. That's the primary purpose. Three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. I don't think the turnover is going to be enough to sustain anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions. We don't plan to advertise using yard wall signs. Right. And five, there shall be no exterior displays, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building. Again, all, since all business is online, there's no point to advertise in the community. Right. Six, no nuisance shall be generated, included, but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Uh, I guess drill is loud, but it's not louder than doing any other house chores. Other than that, yeah, I haven't used any other. I don't time. know what's louder, a crying baby or a drill? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a crying baby. Pretty sure <laughs> crying baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Every time. Well, the drill sound is soothing to a crying baby. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, number seven, the traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Again, the starting products are available either in store or online, so no traffic required beyond, beyond selling in, a, in the community, so no worries. Mm -hmm. Number eight, in addition to off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of a dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for vehicles of each employee and the vehicle, vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. The worst I see is someone, just like we have guests over, maybe two people coming at the same time, mm -hmm. ever. No, we're not planning to employ anyone again. You touched on this a little before. The home occupation may utilize no more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. So it's 160, I think this 180 is with the closet and less than the 20% of our house, and unfinished attic basement spaces only for large storage of end product. Right. Okay. And the C part is not applicable. Right. Number 10, home occupation may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. Uh, there, is n there is no plan to allocate any additional space to put a retail counter and uh, the sale of the products will be pretty much, oh sorry, I'm already jumping to point B. That's fine, you're pretty the, much the answering. The products will be assembled and finished at our address. Correct. Okay, number 11 is in regards to a fisherman, lacerman, or shellfish harvester, <coughs> which not you are not doing. And number 12 is in regards to a motor vehicle repair, which not is not what you're here for tonight. Thank you. Does the board have any questions at this time? No. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to open it up to the public. I don't know if there's anyone here tonight that would like to speak. Um, yes, please. So she's going to come okay, up and sure. we'll let her speak. I'm Daryl Katie. I am one Moxie Way, just across the street. So um, my question is that we actually have a subdivision with covenants, conditions, and restrictions mm -hmm. in Bonnie Grove, which prohibits um, a business in the neighborhood. So I'm, I'm wondering, my question is, does this process, does this appeal process, actually override the subdivisions. So I'm wondering how a business can be started in the neighborhood when our subdivision prohibits businesses. Can I take this one? I, she is a realtor. <laughs> I, I okay. was going to say you. you I, this, is, this is why I said on this. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm a real estate broker, so mm -hmm. I, I deal with a lot of this kind of thing. Okay. Your covenants in your neighborhood mm -hmm. are going to supersede whatever we rule here. So even if we rule that there could be a business, mm -hmm. you're still going to have to go and, and deal with your whatever covenants and get any permission from the neighbors and things like that. Okay. Um, that typically, it, you know, you're starting in the right place because if you don't start here, there's no point mm -hmm. in going there. But um, in, in ca cases like this, usually what you have to do is get approval from both parties. You know, okay. you're going to have to come to us and then, then go seek permission uh -huh. there. It's, if you can, just so we can get the record. If yeah, you well, just let's, let's let her finish. Yeah. If yeah. she's done, then. Yeah. 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 yeah because, because there is, it's in Section 1, 1. 1.5, which prohibits okay. commercial industrial business use. Okay. The only thing I want to clarify on tonight is we are not opening a business for him. We are not saying mm -hmm. you now have a business. My, mm -hmm. And he doesn't, I don't know if he's incorporated and if those are mm -hmm. the sort of de details mm -hmm. that you guys need to work out on your own. Um, we are just saying yeah. what yeah. you've proposed tonight is okay okay um, and so so I also would like to then continue to say that if if in fact there is an approval through the association that there are some other things that if you were to get that that I would like to ask you to consider as well so you you touched on um, things such as supplies and so forth that I would like to add a little bit too. Sure. Um, currently, again, in this, I'm drawing on some of the covenants, the conditions, and restrictions, and such. It talks about 
you know, trash containers and things like that, having those visible from the road or from another lot. Well, that's already a concern. So I would ask that you consider adding that into your language that I don't see that stuff because I don't want to see it. I see are it Are you now. saying it already is an issue or you're concerned about? It's already an issue, so I don't want it to continue or become a bigger issue okay. if there's more supplies being delivered to make more products and such. The other is parking. You addressed parking. Yep. Um, if there are more cars that come in, you pulled up the, you know, one moxie and two moxie, you can see that we're very close together. Mm -hmm. There's very little space for additional cars. Yep. Where there are additional cars, it's very difficult for me to get in and out. So some provision for that as well, okay. that they not block my access. Right. Because that occurs from time to time now, and okay. that can't happen. Yep. Um, the delivery vehicles coming in and out that can't block my access either and and just kind of the last thing is that i currently maintain walk moxie way for snow removal um, if there's going to be a lot of delivery vehicles coming in and out i don't want to have to do that for his business so i would request that if if he's going to have a business that he needs to have delivery trucks come in and out. He maintained Moxie Way for snow removal, not me. Um, so just things to consider if he does get approval from the association and it does move forward. That right. I, I appreciate the concerns that you have brought forward. I think I can see the, our concerns for the future, mm -hmm. and they're not things to do that. I think what we've heard tonight is this is very secondary to kind of the occupations they have. Well, they're there's secondary unless it comes to fruition right and then they're primary yeah and so then you you would have you know you could say they're violating the right the rules of the home occupation mm -hmm. you would have that mm -hmm. right to come back at mm -hmm. that time and well and that's that. my last thing what recourse yep. would I have if the rules that you establish aren't followed mr. Longstaff any violation of the standards is an enforceable thing that you mm -hmm. can call the code office for. okay but this isn't a forum this isn't really a forum to hear grievances that have perhaps come be, come before this request. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't a this isn't a oh, it's my turn to get some leverage on no, this no. situation. No, no. It's my concern and, that And the second thing is the town doesn't enforce covenants, deed covenants. No, no, or no. I understand that. So, I understand that. So just be just mm -hmm. be aware of that. Yep, and that I understand we hear that. Your concerns and, and, and again, any of that stuff can happen, yep. but mm -hmm. I don't know that based on the description that uh, Mr. Chad has given us tonight that mm -hmm. I don't think that you're, you're, you're not going to really know that this is going on. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, we have an off home office provision in our ordinance that if he were doing any kind of back office work, such as accounting mm -hmm. or yeah. that kind of stuff, he wouldn't even have to be here. No. And because yeah. this is being conducted in a bedroom yeah. and it's very low volume, I don't think there's going to be much difference. It's just that I couldn't. I couldn't permit mm -hmm. him as a home office because it didn't yeah. fit the mold. Right, and and the we we have neighbors that have home offices and that's permitted and it is for exactly that reason. If they work from home and they say have another job, say the State Department, which we have those folks, they work at Tyler Technologies, they do that and that's that's permitted. Well but I look this, at this as being very similar to that, only he's working with tools. And and distributing and having large trucks come in and take products away and such. So I think it's very different. No different than anybody ordering stuff on Amazon. <laughs> yeah. It's different. So we, we've heard your, we've mm -hmm. heard your concerns. Mm -hmm. Yep, but and yeah. I appreciate okay. that. So thank, thank you. you. I, I do have a question before you leave, though, Madam Chair, sure. if I may. Yep. Yeah, if you could yes. you know, go back to the uh, podium. Thank you. Um, is this a private development or is this a public uh, street? Um, Moxie Way is a private road. I see. But Bonnie Grove is a public development. Yet the covenants that apply are to, to the, the entire, entire development. association. So you yes. have a public road and private streets in the same yeah, development. That's, and that's and we all that's pay. The way it is? Okay. Yeah. We all pay dues to the association. Yes. I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you said there are. Oh, go ahead. Well, the, the only other thing I would add is just, yeah, you know, we're we're ruling uh, based on zoning, and and the provisions associated with uh, home uh, business uh, businesses. 
that's all we can rule on. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot say anything at all regarding, you know, what the homeowner association covenants. So that's, a, that's I think that's, that reflects the mm -hmm. other, what all the board members have said and what Brian has said. That's that's really between you and the the other members of mm -hmm. the association to deal with separately. Mm -hmm. You know, we're strictly looking at this as a zoning issue right. and a home occupant home occupation permitted or not mm -hmm. okay that's right. that's all we can roll on mm -hmm. thank you though for your input okay uh, I would make, uh, yes. Sorry. so uh thank you Daryl, taking out time to come in she's my immediate neighbor uh, so i i i think these are very personal uh grievances or concerns that she raises um but since she's put everything on the record i just want to my side to be on the record as well one, um, I, don't, I don't want anyone down the line using her words on the record in a meeting to utilize them against me. So I want to just put my side on the record. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely untrue that she maintains a moxie way uh, because for instance, I have a snowblower and I have cameras outside my home. So I have actually, I can document evidence of me plowing the road. The reason she does that is because I guess she leaves really early I don't intend to get up at 5 a.m. to clean the road. If she needs to be out at 6, that's that's what we decided on a you know, joint basis. So second, anytime there's a hole in our road, I have documented evidence where I am personally and independently, so since I'm good with tools, filling up those holes and repairing them. Uh, I do send pictures to her. And uh, I've never asked for money or anything. I don't know if she remembers that. But again, I'm trying to put those things on the record. Yep. Uh, yes, I had a big truck that came in with the material, but guess what? It was a swing set for my kids, okay? That's kind of what I figured. Uh, the swing yeah. set came in 30% damaged. I have documented evidence, emails, that I reached back to the Walmart company. I said, look, what do I do? They said, we'll ship out stuff with you in a week. It took two months. That material, the truck where they placed it, it's too heavy for a single person to move. It light at the end of the street. Okay, and I had no intention of moving it because uh, I couldn't. And again, I have documented evidence of a truck dating coming in, picking that material, shipping it back to Walmart because 30% uh, I didn't want anything to do with broken. Yeah. So yes, uh, big truck came in, it's gonna keep coming in. I'm gonna, even if you deny it, uh, of course I'm not gonna stop shopping Amazon. I guess most of my shopping is from Amazon. All right, one more point, uh, car parkings, uh, she brought it up. We are a very close-knit family. We have eight other close families. Uh, we do about two get-togethers at my home per month. And we do about four to five date, uh, not date, not sorry, kids' nights together. Yeah. So we have three, four cars coming. I'm not gonna stop that, uh, honestly. Yeah. And car, we are very, very, uh, proactive in telling people that up to four cars can come on the driveway. Mm -hmm. One car goes in the central region, and if anything else is, this goes down on the okay. bottom of the, where the bony groove is. Um, I guess I can get my other neighbors to vouch for that. That has happened to that extent that we've even asked for their permission to park the cars on their side. Other than that, I just wanted to put it on the record. Yeah. You know, no, you I, have I appreciate concerns. you qualifying that yeah. because I, I can see it's a little, a little off. Have, Mr. Chata. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thanks. How would you feel about delivering uh, your your makings to the UPS store instead of having a truck come to pick them up? I don't think a truck's going to pick me up. Honestly, the way I look at the prices, um, it's really expensive to get UPS to pick stuff up. I've never done that. Uh, I work at UNE, so we are blessed with an on-site mail that we can use for our personal use. So anytime I have to actually ship out UPS and FedEx it, they come and pick it up from my office at UNE, and I don't even need to go to the store. So I, even if that is something that needs to be sold, uh, then that's, that's, gonna be, that's the route we're going to take. It's going to go to my office, and it's going to go from there. Did we receive any other letters or emails or phone calls? Nope. I'm going to close the public hearing. And now the board is going to go through the criteria. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Thanks. 
uh, one, A, excuse me, A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealth conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design or operation. I, I think it's very obvious that this is going to be a very small hobby-based business that is going to have probably no additional impact on the neighborhood that would not occur if it was just solely a hobby and these items were not being sold. Um, as somebody who's been a crafter all my life, I, I can kind of sympathize. I mean, it's, it's fun to work with your hands. It's fun to build things. It's fun to do things like that. And I think you're just finding a way to get them out the door after you get it done. <laughs> That's kind of what I see is happening. Um, so I don't believe that there's going to be any additional impact uh, from an environmental concern at all or sanitary conditions. Mr. Karen, good evening. Good evening. I have nothing further to have. Thanks. Mr. Waters? Uh, pass. Mr. Hebert? Um, yeah, again, this, I feel this is very straightforward. The, the items that he's saying he's creating using a drill and a screwdriver or glue, there isn't any, um, no emissions or, in, or issues with um, air contamination or sewage disposal and contamination that would be different from anything that you would have already in your home that you're already doing for normal maintenance of your house. Agreed. I see no issues. <clears throat> right, and the craft items are made of common non-toxic materials and they don't involve any unhealthful or unsanitary conditions in assembling them. They're just using a simple hand tool. All in favor of A being that. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Um, yeah, I don't see that there's, it, it does not sound like they intend to do anything out of the house as far as having deliveries picked up or having too many deliveries made. Um, you know, I, I again see this as nothing more than basic home ownership uh, impact. Agreed uh, with what was stated in that these items can be shipped off the premises and are purchased on the line. Don't believe that there'll be visitors picking up items or deliveries. Agreed. Um, <clears throat> the applicant stated that picking up items at their house to be shipped elsewhere would be cost prohibitive, especially for the items that they're creating. The fees alone would sort of negate any kind of profit that you're trying to sell these for. Um, with regard to traffic, especially this time of year, it's no different from Amazon coming to your house two or three times a week because of Christmas gifts or so, or holiday gifts, um, or any other standard delivery that's too big for your mailbox. Um, the applicant stated that they have a better means of bringing their completed goods to be mailed, and that's, and that's off, uh, off of their site. I will add that uh, regarding UPS or FedEx, wherever you, the applicant chooses to use, the costs are no different whether you bring it to a facility or you have a truck pick it up. And there are UPS and FedEx trucks and post office trucks, for that matter, in neighborhoods, including private roads, all the time, everywhere. <clears throat> uh, this is no different than anywhere else. And this is a home hobby business. It's very small volume. Uh, from what I gather, the applicant will be buying most of the uh, uh, you know, raw materials locally uh, using his own vehicle. Uh, I just don't see whether this has any impact uh, above uh, you know, anything else that happens in an average neighborhood. I'd be willing to bet that uh, if the applicant weren't before us, no one would have any idea that he's going to have this business at home. And with that, I live on a private road. We have covenants, and I own the road. And work with your neighbors to work out issues. So I would encourage, as just a friendly neighbor type thing, to try to work on that, because I've had to do that. And it's all like that. Yeah, and it sounds like the volume of products that are made is not going to expect it to result in any sort of increase in traffic or significant. All in favor of B being met. 
C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Once again, I see this as a hobby-based business that is going to be as so such low volume that there is going to be no impact beyond what would be the normal residential life impact. There's no addition, I'll just add to that there's, you know, they've already talked about there being no additional people involved in the business. It's all gonna be contained to the residents of the home. Um, so I, I just, I don't see any, any impact whatsoever. I agree in that the occupation, home occupation is similar, or at such a scale that it would be similar to those other home occupations within the same area. Um, not creating any additional degree of hazard, fire, or other. Agreed. Um, the applicant stated uh, in Part A that you know the material used for the um, the home occupation are non-toxic materials and are common, which are probably are more than likely than not already present in every home anyways. If you're talking about wood and glue and drills and screws and so on, these are already present in their home, which wouldn't, in, which would not require an increase in police or fire protection for this. Yeah, I totally agree. I don't see any uh, increased uh, uh, bearing whatsoever on the uh, fire or police. I see no impact whatsoever. All right, and then he said he's using simple hand tools. There's no big equipment being operated or anything like that. Right. All in favor of C being met? D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supply. Again, I, I don't see any impact. Agreed. And no additional work outside the home um, to the site, so no adverse impact. As previously stated, the materials that he's working with are non-toxic, and he's not going to be wording, working with water-based tools that would require drainage into their septic system or uh, into their water supply. Uh, and I agree also, and further state that uh, uh, none of the work will be done outside, uh, which could create uh, erosion problems, but uh, rather all inside of a, a spare bedroom, uh, having no impact at all on the environment. I agree, no impact. Right, the product assembly is going to be within the existing dwelling and there's no changes being made to the actual dwelling. So all in favor of D being met. E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. So again, with a, with a hobby-based business, I think you're not going to have any idea what's going on within that, that structure. Um, I, I just, for, based on what we've, has been described to us, um, I don't feel that there will be any, any notice or, or awareness of, of what's going on inside from, and from many of the neighbors or anybody else. Um, and, you know, I, I do want to just point out, you know, you're kind of in a, you're in a pipe stem situation where I understand it's, it's tricky because you've got two homes that are off of the same drive. Those are always tricky situations, and I don't think it's going to have anything to do with this business. Agreed. Um, the noise and visual impact being within the existing dwelling will not be, or should not be noticeable. As previously stated, should the home occupation grow at such a scale that it becomes um, the primary use of the dwelling, and then that's something to follow up upon but no concerns. Agreed. Um, as, as he's not, he hasn't indicated that he's gonna have, you know, he's not gonna have planers or drill presses or wood lays in this. It's gonna be hand tools, drills, a hammer and screwdriver. Um, so the square footage he has in his house is more than enough to accommodate um, Accommodate what their uh, what is what his actions are going to be, and he's demonstrated on his plan the square footage that he's going to be using for it, which is under the twenty percent. You forgot the glue gun. Share the glue gun. 
time changers with the blue dots. Well, those are battery powered these okay. days. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, let me add on, on this particular one, on Ida B here. We're talking about impact on the exterior of the home, the, the visual impact of the home relative to the neighborhood. There is no impact whatsoever. Yeah, I don't see any impact whatsoever. Um, would be an interesting question to know when you're going to find the time to do it all. <laughs> seven month old and a four year old working full time. You must not sleep. <laughs> so, as we said, you know, the activity is taking with it, place within the existing dwelling, so no one's going to be able to tell. And as the neighbor told us tonight, there's actually other home businesses scattered throughout that neighborhood as well. So all in favor of E being met. F, if located in the shoreland zone, um, subject property is not in the shoreland zone. So all in favor of that. Um, G, the applicant has sufficient right to <coughs> or interest at the site of the proposed use to carry, to be able to carry out the proposed use. Um, they did include an owner's policy, and that shows that they are the owners of the pro of the property. I think that's sufficient. Nothing further to add. Okay. Yeah, they provide documentation. Agreed. Agreed. All right, and the town records will reflect that as well. All in favor of G being met. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standard of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Um, I, I see where he said that he's willing to provide a financial statement. I don't think that that's necessary. I think his testimony in front of the Board here has been sufficient to, to establish that the family has has the resources to do this. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a hobby type business, so it's not likely to be extremely demanding on on resources. Fortunately, I missed that testimony. Nothing further to add. Agreed. I agree. I mean, he's not making large pieces that require, you know, heavy duty equipment. Um, it's a more hobby based supplemental to his primary occupation. Um, and he also has a young family, so that's going to limit his hours of operation, anyways. Uh, so uh, I would add that item H really talks to um, conditions that the board might place, and so far we haven't even talked about any conditions, and again, the, the applicant has the means to meet whatever conditions we might choose to put on this. Mm -hmm. I think the exception is met. It's met. All in favor of H being met. I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and operation of hours. So once again, hobby based business, um, you're not likely to even notice it going on within the home. Um, the only thing I would add with this is that, you know, a reminder that you do need to be, you need to get around those covenants. You're going to need to find a way to negotiate that separately and apart from how, whatever decision the board makes, uh, because that is something that's outside of our control. It's that's between you and, and, and your neighbors. Um, and you'll have to work that out and get permission to do that. We're, we, we're not in a position to be able to give you permission nor to deny you this application because of those rules. So, um, you know, just take that into an under advisement. I have a question on that. Are we good with that? Um, is it a question you can ask offline or does it? Just because we've closed it's, the... It's out of order. It's close to the scope. Oh. Yeah. You can save yeah. that for after. Yeah. Yep. Um, Mr. Karen. Agreed. Um, compatible with the existing uses within the neighborhood. <coughs> no exterior signage um, or visual impact. No concern. Agreed. To correct myself, my previous answer for H was my answer for I. <laughs> I, was writing, I was writing it, I was, I was reading that, but uh, just to piggyback on Ms. Torrens's comments, I'm hoping that uh, common sense and good neighborship, good neighborhood can prevail in this case, uh, with, just with regard to the, the small scope of what's going on here. No different from any other hobby going on in someone's home, I would hope. 
Uh, again, I'll echo what you just said and uh, piggyback on Ms. Torres' comment, I think is quite appropriate. This is uh, an issue that really needs to be resolved between neighbors and the association, uh, and we cannot be involved with that in any way. There's, there are existing offices in, in the neighborhood, as uh, our visitor commented, and I don't see any issue with this whatsoever. Right. I mean, we've learned tonight that there appears to be other businesses already operating Correct. within that development. Um, all in favor of I being met. Um, so then we have the performance standards for home occupation. Um, I don't know if we need to go through those individually or if the board feels comfortable voting on them as a whole. I would feel comfortable with that. I would as well. I would as well. Um, would. So, so there are standards one through nine that are applicable tonight. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, a motion, motion to um, approve those standards as a group. Seconded. All in favor? No, I think they were very clear on this. I mean, everything was well documented. Thank you for that, by the way. It's not often we get everything typed out for the right. whole occupa I know. occupation <laughs> thing, very which is very. Uh, I will very second very that th third or fourth that motion because uh, I agree. You, you, yeah. So often we have applicants coming for us who don't even address the uh, performance standards, and you did a remarkably good yeah. job with that. I, 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 There you go. Not every applicant Perfect. takes the time yes, to do that. Yes, but you followed through. So, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's rare. So with that, I um, I think, you know, this this covers any sort of questions or discussion we would have on it. So yep. now do we go? Okay, so all in favor of the performance standards for home occupation being met. Okay. And now do we have a motion on the appeal? I'll move to approve. Uh, appeal number 2676 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? You are approved. You know, there's nobody opposed to you here because you <laughs> unless they walk in at the next minute, last minute. Okay, the um, appellants um, are here to request a limited reduction of yard size. The uh, single family dwelling is on record as being built in 1960, so it qualifies under that uh, age restriction of the structure. They're in the R2 district. They have uh, over a half acre uh, parcel, but it's kind of a, uh, an oddly shaped non-conforming parcel because of the road frontage only being 70. 4.97 feet, so it's a little narrower than usual for an R2 lot, which uh, in that coupled with the structure already uh, being located uh, some 12 and a half feet from the property line, obviously not meeting the 15 foot setback, um, they're here to uh, request that, that uh, up to five feet of uh, relief on the side uh, setback, and I think they uh, too have put together a very complete application that the board's had a chance to review. Uh, I think they provided some fairly decent um, arguments for uh, why this they, they choose to put this addition on the uh, in the location that they're proposing, and I think uh, I think more more information on that will come from the appellants as as you go through the standards. Um, I really have nothing else <coughs> to add. To that. Uh, may I uh, just add something, uh, Madam Chair? Uh, there were some notes in the uh, in what we received here regarding medical issues, and I would uh, think it would be, not be proper for those to come before the board 
since we are broadcasting this live. And mm -hmm. that's, these are Correct. Yes. Don't, don't feel like you need to go into details. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to ask that the only reason I yeah. have anything is if it helps provide context yeah. at all for why. I don't it, think it does. Okay. I, I don't no. Think no. It's, I, no. Okay. I think no. we appreciate the background, which is helpful, but don't okay. feel like you need to elaborate on it. Okay. Right. So if you, you guys want to go ahead and give us a little, right. a little bit of sure. information. Yeah. Yeah. That was more for the purposes of just understanding why we're doing that yep. particular thing yes. and why it's so important to yep. us to try to do it. Oh, we appreciate that. No, yes. I, I do. Uh -huh. it's, it's between so, you and obviously, you know who we are. I'm Eric Stunkel, 8 Robinson Road. Caitlin Berry, Robinson Road, and um, like Brian said, we're proposing to build a 15 by 18 foot single story bedroom addition, which would extend the existing back to left corner of our house. And we had a boundary survey done, and our house currently sits 12.6 uh, feet from the side boundary line on the left, um, which is obviously um, not in line with the current 15 foot setbacks. So we're applying for a three foot variance to include a six inch roof overhang so that we could build right off the existing structure. Um, and the main goal of doing this is to achieve the level bedroom floor um, because we've, the age of our house, we've had those issues. Um, we've tried a multitude of other solutions to try to fix that first. Um, and so we discussed with an engineer, architect, and builders the best way to try to achieve this goal was to put on the addition. Um, and it's risky to try to remedy things inside um, because you get into the internal structure, which could be very costly, as well as not necessarily uh, fix the problem as well um, and not get the desired results when we're trying to use all our resources to try to achieve that result. Um, so the size of our house is very small. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see that um, the internal layout as well as the other side lines impact where we can put the addition as well as what we can really do to the internal layout. Um, and if we were able to get a variance, it would allow us to put the addition in the most logical place while achieving uh, some of the other aspects that are important to us for future concerns, such as single floor living, um, being able to add a functional closet. Um, and if you have to go in further, when you're talking about that small of a size room, then you become quite a narrow room. We're talking about going from possible 15 feet to at the max um, 12 feet. <coughs> and then it would become very narrow and you sacrifice some of those functional aspects. Um, so when we're kind of trying to invest this much, we want to try to be able to achieve the goals that we need and, and, and also take into consideration future um, needs in our investment. So um, I can elaborate on any of those details if you need me or have further questions as we go through the criteria. Yeah, no, you did a really good job with the application, so thank you. We'll go through the criteria now, and you can just read in and elaborate as you feel. Okay. Uh, number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size residential is required was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Oh, that's, sorry, I'm out of here. Um, yes. So the home was built in 1960, and we attached the deed and the GSI website property detail information sheet, as Brian said, it was built in 1960. Two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to, mit to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. So yes, yeah, so we'd be building this addition for a bedroom and it's not just for us about square increasing the square footage, although that's an added benefit that we get the increased square footage, the increased functional access um, for the purpose of trying to increase our quality of life because it's been impacted by the existing structure. Um, and by achieving a new level bedroom floor, we'd be able to enjoy the typical use of having a comfortable bedroom. And we're hoping also to add a a more functional walk-in closet. I have trouble getting into like drawers and different things like that. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to try to expand that to make that easier as well. Um, and also making it more accessible by having it on the first floor. Okay. okay. Three, 
three, due to the physical features of the lot and our location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. So uh, we had an engineer investigate because we looked into other options. We just wanted to make sure we were aware of all the options. So we had a structural engineer, which I believe you have some documentation that he provided as well. Um, but in general, um, it was determined due to the construction comment in the 1960s um, that you, it would basically be very costly to attempt to try to remedy this within the existing structure. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a possibility of unforeseen costs with that due to the complexity of trying to remediate the issue. And so his recommendation was that because it wouldn't necessarily achieve this desired result, it'd be invasive and costly, that the best thing to do would be to add an addition. Um, and we're also slowly trying to make changes to our home to make it more accessible um, in the future. And we want to invest in a plan that has some longer range benefits. Um, also, the internal layout poses some limitations um, for where we can go. So and on the floor plans there, you can see that the back left corner is our office. It's a little less than 12 feet wide. So it doesn't leave us a lot of wiggle room. Right next to that, you have a linen closet bathroom where the tub is, and then right next to that, a bedroom. I mean, um, the kitchen, rather, with a bulkhead on there. So without changing that internal structure, there's not really any room besides it to do anything with that internal structure. And also the, ba the bathroom has also been remodeled. Um, so you, to try to reconfigure that would be really difficult. And those two rooms are also really small, so they don't really allow for a lot of change in size. Um, and there's not really anywhere else to reconfigure them and then due to the setbacks, because we have a really long, narrow lot, there's not the setbacks on other sides are going to run into similar issues in that we have a long lot, but not any, yeah, not a wide one, essentially. Right. Um, and then other layouts, if we were to try to maximize the width in the new portion on the back of the house, there you can only go so far over as to the bathroom window there in the middle. Right which we would want to try to preserve because that's the only bathroom and it that provides light into that bathroom, it provides ventilation into that bathroom. Um, so we don't want to go over into that bathroom and we don't want to go, even if you were to bring it out, we don't want to go over that window. Um, and if we changed it, even if we change it to a smaller width, then you start to lose those functional pieces. The closet becomes smaller. The hallway becomes too narrow to be able to fit certain things through it, um, so that are important. Um, yeah. Well, another another consideration is because we do only because we do only have one uh, bathroom is you know we don't know like we're hoping this will be for our forever home. Um, we love Scarborough, we love our neighbors, um, and um, we we would consider in the future putting. Um, a small bathroom going on the second floor. And so once we start moving over in that direction, then we're dealing with different intersecting spots on the roof and stuff. So if we can just go like straight off the side, then that would just be like one less thing we have to worry about for future kind of growing into to staying there. Um, and then, you know, as far as just another thing, um, the, 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 like to some, well, I guess, are you gonna mention anything? Um, one of the things with the hallway width is we want to make sure we can get um, electric base to get through that area. The, the bases aren't, you can't take them apart like regular bed frames. Um, and it's pretty tough just to get into the house with the doors we have right now. So like if we were to narrow it, then we wouldn't be able to do the walk-in. Um, and then we, you know, in order to have a wide enough hallway. Um, so we're trying to just keep it as open as we can. Yeah. So we appreciate that being considered. Okay. Number four, the 
impact and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Uh, so putting that addition on that, it doesn't impact our neighbor's views because it's in the back. Uh, the closest neighbors abutting the side, they have a garage. Yeah, that and that's from their yeah, kind of look looking at our house from their house and um, so they wouldn't really they wouldn't even see the addition from their house because you can see there that's their garage right there um, so it would come out so far as their house is behind there so it doesn't impact it and moving it three feet over doesn't also change that um, there's an existing fence there that is already there that provides privacy so that doesn't affect their view. It's already um, up. There's, it's a single story, so the neighbors across the street aren't impacted. They wouldn't even see anything from the road. It would just be basically trying to continue out the back of the house. And the other side, whoops, sorry. Our neighbors on the other side, um, there's a pretty significant, almost like another lot in between. They don't. It's, it's such a big lot. Um, neither one, we talked to both of them about it, um, and neither one of them had a concern with it. Um, one of them, I believe, wrote a letter. The other one said he was going to send it directly. I'm not sure if he did that, but we spoke to both those people that would see it, and neither one had an issue with that. The back of the lot is really wooded, so you don't see anything anyways. There's trees in between. I see that pictures, obviously. Yeah. Um, in there. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Most of the pictures. Okay. Um, five, the applicant has not commenced construction on the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in yard size is required. No, we no. have not started anything. Okay. Thank you. Does the board have any questions? I don't. This time? Nor do I. No, Let's I don't. Take forward. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to open it up to the public now. If there's anyone here that would like to speak, I do think we did receive a, a letter. <coughs> Looks like we got a letter here from John and Pat, John Green and Patricia James. We live at 6 Robinson Road. I'm responding to a notice in regards to your addition. Um, my wife Patricia and I are the closest to Butters, whose garage is immediately adjacent to the pros adi proposed addition. We have reviewed the proposed plan for the addition and fully support Eric and Caitlin's request for a variance. If you have any questions or require additional information, feel free to contact us. We wish our neighbors the best of luck in their pursuit of this project. Oh, okay, and that's what we got. <laughs> so that's good. All right, so I'm gonna close the public hearing and now the board is gonna do our findings of facts and conclusions of law. So you guys are all set. Um, this is like probably the best application I have ever seen. You guys can have a seat. You can have a seat. Okay. But this is, this, I feel like, that's great. You did. It, it shows. I mean, we do a lot, and I have to. I have to comment again. I mean, this is a very thorough application, and you'll see as we go through the criteria. You did a really good job. Madam Chair, I got to tell you, this this group really listened to the advice. They did. Everybody, right? Did. Not everyone listens. I know. This is a great well, night. Honestly, I tell everybody the same thing. But well, now we believe you. Now we believe you, Brian. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. There you go. All right, uh, so number one, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested, it was erected prior to July 3rd, 1991. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is easily determined, and I believe that it's, but it was built in 1960 based on the information attached. Agreed nothing further. Agreed. They provided the deed and GIS information indicating that, yes, it was built in 1960. Agreed. Agreed. All in favor of one being that. Two, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. This is the, uh, so as much as I want to do this and I want to have no issues with any of this because, I, you know, but when I look at the criteria, 
I don't know that I can say that that's that that's true. Uh, um, I don't know that the requested reduction is reasonably necessary um, because I do think there, you know, as, as much as you wouldn't want to slide over in front of that bathroom window, that is an option or reducing the, the width of the property. So um, I, I have my concerns about whether I can actually say that it's reasonably necessary. I want to thank the uh, those that helped produce this application this evening. I think that, as previously mentioned, the additional information regarding the placement of the addition with the location of the existing structure, the additional report regarding the structural stability of the existing building um, helps speak to the reasonableness of its location and its necessity to permit the owner occupant with uh, the use that is similar in the adjacent zoning district and houses. So. Ms. Water. If I just remodeled my bathroom, I probably wouldn't want to have to move it to do an addition. I think it's reasonable to want to put the addition where you guys want to put it, and um, especially if there's a medical condition that necessitates it. Mr. Weber. I'd say looking at the, the definition of accessibility when you're enjoying the property similar to others in the neighborhood, this is not outside of the realm of, um, this is not an un unreasonable request, so I would say that this fulfills that requirement. Uh, and I certainly agree with that. And I would also add that uh, based on the engineering surveys that were done, uh, this is the only cost effective and reasonable way of being able to solve a problem uh, with this building, which has a lot of issues with it. Uh, and uh, I think it's this is certainly within the realm of being reasonable. And I think you spent the time and investigated the options of what to do here. I mean, you're eliminating an office slash potentially bedroom to create a master bedroom. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to go back, if I, if I can, one more time. Just yeah. Because I... Well, I, well, I say I have an issue with trying to justify the... the reasonableness of it I'm on the fence so I'm tipping you know it's, it's really easy to go one way or the other so <laughs> well and they're looking to enjoy the property in essentially the same manner so if they had a property that didn't have to come before the board it's not unreasonable for them to want solid level floors and it's not mm -hmm. unreasonable to get I mean the, the engineering report is super helpful and the fact that the structure mm -hmm. to start getting inside of it is very invasive and costly um, and so I think that's sort of swaying me so all in favor of two being met three due to the physical features of the lot and or location of the existing structure on the lot it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements so I think it's very very clear looking at all of the supports that we've been provided with that it, it's a very long narrow lot um, and there really isn't a lot of options here as far as expanding. Agreed with the existing bulkhead in the rear and the property line to the other side of the house, to the front of the house, and the neighbor's property. Um, the documentation that you've provided tonight shows the best location for it. Agreed. As Mr. Karen just stated with regard to the location of the bulkhead and the kitchen, um, elsewhere that there really isn't another location where they can build this addition out and also due to the odd shape of the entire lot in general they're very restricted of where they can put this um, just I think based on the uh, you know they've done the best they can with uh, with what they have here and uh, stamped documents prove that 
I agree. I agree. Yeah, the existing dwelling was originally constructed 12.6 feet from the side property line, so any addition or expansion of the dwelling within the existing footprint would be non-conforming. So all in favor of three being that. Four, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. So I, I think that the, the design plan um, is basically just extending that side wall down further. Um, so it does, it keeps it in line, aligned with the existing home, which, which makes sense. Um, I think the fact that we have a letter from a neighbor that says that they're not opposed to it, in fact, they're supportive of it, and there's nobody here in the gallery that's, that's saying otherwise. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think we really have to worry too much about uh, there being any substantial greater impact or, or effect from doing this. Speaking to a visual impact, they've done a great job of putting it to the rear of the building away from the street. Um, fortunate for the uh, applicant, um, the adjacent neighbor already has an existing garage that would block any negative views from that side of the house. Uh, wooded areas to the rear. Um, the expansion would be of a similar use of the neighborhood. Um, no negative impacts that I can see. Great. Um, again, I'll piggybacking off of Rudy's point and showing the viewpoint from the neighbor's garage side of to where that would go, it clearly shows that it wouldn't be um, a visual impediment to the neighbor who is supportive on their, put that on the, on the record that they wrote it in, supportive of the uh, addition to this home. Um, it is not substantially different or greater than any other building or structure that someone would want to do in any of their homes in this neighborhood if they wanted to have a sunroom addition or some or another um, addition off of their home. Uh, I will agree with all that and further state that uh, the addition uh, is very attractive and will uh, enhance the, uh, uh, the value of the property in the neighborhood. I think it's a good design. It fits and makes a lot of sense. All right, it's a single story structure addition that's partially buffered by a fence and trees. So let's see if we can pack there. All in favor of four being met. Five is the applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement expansion building or structure for which a limited reduction in yard size is requested. I believe that they have not commenced construction, so I think that's a, an easy one to answer. Um, I agree. No further comment. Agreed. I have nothing to add. Nor do I. Nothing. Correct. The applicant testified tonight that they have not begun construction. All in favor. They better not because we don't have a permit. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for thank you for actually respecting that part of the process. Not <laughs> that isn't always the case. Either. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All in favor of five being that. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve appeal number. 2677 is presented. I'll second. We have a discussion. I think this was a very well put together application. Everything was very yes. documented yes. with stamped engineers and surveyors, and it answered every question that we could have asked. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. All in favor? Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Yes, seriously. Great. Thank you. Save this one as I an know. Example. I like, can you give this? I'm seriously I know. thinking that. Can we use it? Take the names and addresses no, out no. and use it as the model. <coughs> yeah, this, this will go on, like, be put out there on record somewhere, right? You know, where they go on and watch. This is how it's done. <laughs> put it in Brian's handbook. <laughs> That's right. Yes, within seven days you should receive a letter uh, stating that your appeal was approved. It'll be signed by the, the chair. We, we do a formal finding, uh, findings and conclusions. I've jotted down notes. I go back and put those together and we bring them back to the next meeting. But the approval as of tonight is what you need and you'll get the letter signifying that within a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Thank you. Good luck with everything. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Take care.
Doreen was kind enough to give us the calendar, the schedule for next year. Mm -hmm. We also wanted to point out that the meeting in January is actually going to be technically the third Wednesday, which is January 15th. The, uh, the first Wednesday falls on the first, and so the town council decided they yes, didn't want to come in from <laughs> New Year's Day to have their meeting. It actually works really great because usually we're fighting for space. We just we just traded weeks, right. so we have the availability. That that will probably be the only time that will happen. Although, as I was mentioning to Karen early before the meeting. The budget hearings will be coming up, so we're we're likely to get bumped from our usual spot at some point. Hopefully, we'll keep the same night, but we may have to bounce around for a few meetings. But it, it okay. usually doesn't take more than one or two. We're back on schedule, and back in the back in the chambers. Again. So, um, yeah. So you have some more agenda items. Yes. To so every <laughs> December, or I'm not sure. I was told we didn't always do it in December, but I think it's appropriate to do elections in December. So when we come to January, we have our new members or whoever is in charge mm -hmm. doing it. Um, so we, we're going to do elections now. I don't know if anyone has any motions or comments. Or... I'll move to nominate Karen as our chair. No, I'll second. Are there any other nominations for chair? Because it's not just like you nominate one and go for it. Right. You can nominate someone. <laughs> well, does Karen want it? <laughs> well, she already told us she wants she can, it. She can well, give I, her I, I think I just sent in my email, Brian and I think, yeah, we I all think saw that. people who have been on the board long enough know that we've worked really hard this year. Yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. So you you can, I think I must have missed an email, but yeah. so you as long can, as you, you want can, it, we're good. You can, <laughs> you can accept the nomination or respectfully decline. Okay. So do you oh, accept? So I accept. Okay. Yeah, thank you. But we need a vice chair as well. Well, we have to vote on you first. Oh, we, are we voting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so all in favor, I guess, of me. <laughs> Thanks. Um, is anyone interested in being vice chair? I nominate James. Okay. I, second. I was going to say, I think I, James I, I has done a really good job. I can enjoy it. I will second that. Okay. It's the easiest all in job in favor ever. of James as vice chair. There we go. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> it's like vice president. It's the easiest job in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other uh, <laughs> issues, comments? Uh, I really don't have too much. Um, <clears throat> I may have mentioned a few meetings back that we, we do have some shoreland zoning amendments that are all queued up, drafted, have been reviewed by the state and, uh, and uh, are now ready to go before the ordinance committee for their blessing and then the council. And my sincere wish that um, should should it need to happen that the zoning board of appeals will um, support those amendments. We work pretty hard to get them in line with the state's guidelines and hopefully correct a few things that will bring a few less um, people uh, to, to the board for a variance when one doesn't necessarily have to happen because of the state guidelines. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully we kind of ironed out some of those things. And, and, uh, okay. Hopefully that it, you know, the board would support those uh, at the uh, appropriate time. Right. So I know we've been to an ordinance meeting before yeah. along those lines of coming to the ordinance meeting and you just say something really quick just kind of in yeah, support and yeah. your experience. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. no one... Not a lot of people go to these ordinance meetings, so there is a big impact when one or two people show up. There will also be public hearings, either at council or at the planning okay. board as part of the adoption right. process yep. or the approval process. So I'll keep, I'll try to yeah. send out emails to keep you aware of mm -hmm. those meetings, and if just one or even one or two could mm -hmm. come and support yep. that, I think it, it's helpful. Well, sure. If I can add to that real quick, I mean, we've all seen how impactful it is for uh, reviewing an application and then coming to the meeting and all of a sudden having one or two people come up and speak that could potentially change your mm -hmm. perspective um, on on a certain application. So, like, as, as uh, Karen said, going to these, if you can, are very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. To shut them down or to approve them. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. The email reminders would be really helpful. 
Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, we'll, yep. we'll make sure that we do that. <coughs> I don't know exactly when those yeah, meetings just, are going to happen at this point, but as soon as I know, like a week ahead. I'll let you, you all know. Just if nothing else for your own information. Can we just get a Google calendar Thanks, and sync it with our own? Yeah. <laughs> and, and other than that, all I can say is uh, Merry Christmas and hopefully everyone has a wonderful yes. holiday. Yes. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Merry we'll, Christmas. We'll start the new year with the same slate of folks, which is great. Yes. This that's, is so exciting awesome. that we have so many of us. Yeah. I think the board has done a really good job. I feel like we work well together, yeah. and I think we've done a really good job at doing our finding of facts and really kind of articulating what we what we need to do. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Do I have Agreed. a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? <laughs> okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.